John, welcome to Real Vision. Pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. You know, at Real Vision, we're having this conversation right now, uh, thinking through this exponential age, digital technology, exponential growth, and a rapidly changing world. I'm very excited to talk to you today about how all of that relates to science, medicine, and innovation. Well, you know, it's it's fascinating. Let's go back 100 years. I think that's probably the best place to start. Let's go back when things were slow. And you're in your cornfield in Iowa, and this weird thing, maybe, maybe, maybe a UFO, even though that term hadn't been invented yet, but it was the airplane. And that airplane lands in your yard. And, and that established sort of a fundamental or an inflection point of change in a lot of what happens in our world today. And, and think about this, Ash. It took 67 years for the airline industry, 67 years, a lifetime for it to get to 50 million users. Facebook took three years. Pokemon Go took 19 days. That's the essence of exponential today. It's it's just so rapid that it lives in the domain of two interesting characteristics, and we can talk more about this later, but it's the domain of wonder and fear. And interestingly, we see wonder and fear in the financial community all the time, right? Do I buy, do I sell? And, and, and that's the same thing in technology today. Wonder and fear was the first emotion that that farmer felt when he or she saw that rickety old airplane landing in their yard. This is the coolest thing I ever saw, but I'm not getting in it. And we see that today in so many aspects. The rapid change creates a dynamic of wonder and fear. And that really comes to life in the context of the CEO. Harvard Business School did an interesting study. They asked CEOs, they said, What's your biggest competitive advantage in today's marketplace? And you know what they said? Speed. We can react. We can be dynamic. We can bring new products to market. Then they asked them the same question. They said, what keeps you up at night? And they said, speed. So, you know, the nature of exponential change is real interesting, but it's problematic. And I'll I'll touch on one other thing and and I'll stop talking a little bit. But the exponential curve, that hockey stick, that rapid change, is very important because the early part of that curve is rather flat. And the early part of that curve is actually under linear growth. So if you compare your exponential model to 5% or 10% or 12% interest in your IRA or some traditional conventional linear extrapolation, the early part of the curve is under. So what do investors say? What do CEOs say? What, What do innovators say? Uh uh-oh, something's wrong here. So, you know, exponential change defines the world we live in today, but it's also a very interesting and and almost slippery path that we have to be aware of. John, it's extraordinary that you are thinking about this almost exactly the same way that we are. Uh, It's just fascinating to hear those points that you touch on. Uh, These are all part and parcel of what we think about when we're thinking about exponential change at Real Vision. Uh, Now that we've set a little bit of the context, I know you do a lot of different things. Tell us about what you do. So I guess if you had to condense it down to a a single-minded positioning, I'm an innovation theorist. I I try to understand the nature of change. My background is actually in... um, Uh, science in cardiovascular pathophysiology, spent some time up at Harvard Medical School, uh, left that because I wanted to do things that were more interesting. I found medicine to be a little boring, if you will. So I ended up working for this big advertising agency in New York called Ogilvy. And I was the chief creative officer, the chief um, technology officer, as well as the unit president. So I jokingly tell people I'm bilingual. I speak a little bit of medicine and I speak a little bit of marketing. And that's so important because both of those parties oftentimes don't understand each other. So add to that a layer of technology that I focused on for the past 10 years. And it's that triad that kind of brings me to the marketplace. That's really intriguing. I think a little of Michael Crichton being uh, at Harvard Medical School and saying, yeah, this isn't really maybe what I want uh, to do with my life. Uh, Ogilvy, obviously a fascinating shop, yeah. very innovative. I just read a book uh, by a gentleman named Rory Sutherland mm-hmm, uh, that sure. changed the way uh, that I looked at the world. So when you bring these two incredibly divergent backgrounds together, mm-hmm. tell us a little bit uh, about what you're doing with that, what your day-to-day looks like, the projects you're working on right now. I know you're a member of the Google Health Advisory Board. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now. 
Well, interestingly, my preoccupation is not necessarily technology itself. 